Little Witch in the Woods is a story-driven adventure game by Sunnyside Up about Ellie, a witch's apprentice who misses her train to the witch's house in Hylion. She quickly decides that living in an abandoned witch's home in the woods and going on an adventure sounds like a lot more fun way to complete her apprenticeship. Today I'll give a few reasons on why this is a game that you might want to play or perhaps a game you might want to pass on. Play. This game is adorable. It has pixel style graphics but also character portraits that are expressive and well done. Ellie is full of life and excitement while her companion, her hat Virgil, is more logical and pragmatic. However, Virgil is not shy about playfully joking around with the young witch apprentice, although sometimes he clearly isn't joking at all, but Ellie takes it all in stride. Ellie uses what she's learned from the witch school to help those she meets along the way, with a plan to restore the village after mysterious vines have destroyed it. The characters she meets all have their own stories, and there is even a personal stories option if you want to learn more about them, which I highly suggest. You will also learn a lot about Ellie through her banter with Virgil, and you get to see how this little witch and her hat were made for one another. Pass. This is an early access release, and the developers have been upfront that this is not the entire game. What is presently released includes the prologue as well as chapter one, with the full game set to release in 2023 and plans to include the prologue, three chapters, as well as an ending. Gameplay as it currently stands is around five hours long, with the full game expected to be around 20 hours. So for the $15 price point, that might be a bit steep for what you get right now. However, the full game promises more to the story, more themes, more characters, new challenges, new activities, and even more. But that will be a bit of a wait. Additionally, early access means there may be performance issues. I have experienced frame rate drops, lagging, I've seen some typos, and while I didn't have any issues with the use of controller inputs, some players using the keyboard have noticed some difficulty navigating the various screens. So it's a bit buggy, but the game only released on May 16th and the developers have already started rolling out patches, so they're addressing the issues very quickly. Play. There is always something to do. Now this is a story driven adventure, not a farm sim, so there will be no planting or harvesting to be done, but you will have to forage and explore quite a bit. As a witch in training, Ellie will have to make potions, both to use to advance the story as well as to sell to merchants she encounters, using their currency or the rewards granted to her to upgrade her equipment and help her on her way. And this game is not short on missions and fetch quests which I rather like. The main quests are highlighted in red, while the side quests are highlighted in blue, and they are already building up quite nicely. So it really gives you an incentive to explore everywhere you can to find hidden areas, as well as gather up as many items as you can carry. Pass. Now, this one depends on your expectations. Being that this is a story-driven game, there will be a lot of dialogue. In fact, I found the first section of the story a bit slow because it dropped you in the middle of a conversation and it was very heavy on conversational story building without much to break it up. It took me about 10 to 12 minutes before even getting off the train to get into the woods after talking to everyone and trying all the dialogue options. And while for many players that won't be a problem, for some players it might be a bit tedious to have that much of an exposition dump right at the start of the game. So for those who pick it up and it seems a bit slow to start, once you get through the opening, there is much more to do. Play. The game is pretty intuitive, particularly if you're familiar with adventure games or enjoy the RPG aspect of farm sim games. The structure of the plot is pretty similar to games in the genre. Protagonist finds herself in an unfamiliar place, discovers a mystery, finds hidden areas and secrets, meets the locals, and restores what is destroyed. Meanwhile, also having to fix up her tools and equipment to better aid in the journey. Ellie may have stumbled upon a fully furnished home, but it's old and things are broken and it will take time to fix. Potion and candy making is a major aspect of the game, which she can make once she learns new recipes, gather ingredients, transform them, add to the witch's cauldron, adjust the heat, stir, and voila! Pass. Perhaps because it's an early access or perhaps it's overall game design, moving from place to place can take some time. There are signposts to show you where you are and where things are around you, but there is no fast travel, so Ellie will have to trek from place to place. Also, the day ends at 12 a.m., so not a lot of time if you're out grabbing some witch flowers or dango mango. And if you do not make it to bed on time, you will not wake up with full stamina, so it's best to get some sleep. 
Oh, and um, there is no auto save and only one place that I found so far where you can save your game. So, um, yeah, remember to manually save whenever you get the chance. All in all, Little Witch in the Woods is shaping up to be a fun adventure. While it's not fully polished just yet, the devs are working to expand upon the game and fix the little kinks along the way. By the full release, the devs have plans to add on things such as fishing, specialized gift giving to NPCs to build friendship intimacy, and communicating with cats, so there's a lot more to look forward to as Ellie's journey continues.